From the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida, this is The Diz Unplugged. This is The Diz Unplugged for episode 648 for the week of October 8th, 2013. The Diz Unplugged is sponsored by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Dreams Unlimited Travel for all your Disney vacation needs. Hello, everyone. I'm John Magi, and I'll be your host for the Diz Unplugged for this week. Uh, and I am joined at the table. Say it. Do it. By Teresa Eccles. <laughs> Kevin oh Close. That was my housewife's wave. Kari Martin. Kari? Kari, Kari Martin. <laughs> Sean Thompson. And Shane. Shane Thomas. <laughs> and back in the production of Craig Williams. And everybody is very silly today. Why is everyone so silly? A week it's a off, thousand it's degrees. It's Teresa's I fault. It's the drugs. Yeah. Teresa had a little problem earlier on today. All right. Um, for those of you who are wondering, uh, Pete Werner and Dustin West are not here this week, obviously. They're on a Royal Caribbean cruise. Uh, Kathy Rowling was going to come, but she is not because um, Disney, in their infinite wisdom, released a whole bunch of discounts this week. So she is helping her clients save money, as are all of our Dreams Unlimited Travel agents working hard today. Except for Teresa. Except for me. <laughs> Except for Teresa. <laughs> yeah. Sorry if you're Teresa's client. <laughs> she's here oh, today. I, I took care of my one client before I came. <laughs> oh, good. It's good to know how hard she's working for us, my one client. So... Um, we, those guys are missed, obviously, and hopefully they'll be back next week for the show. Um, this episode, we're going to do the usual. We're going to do some housekeeping, the news, and round table, round blue, round table yes, rapid fire. <laughs> so uh, let's get started with some housekeeping. Who has something they want to mention? I do. I have a, a lot of thank yous. I want to thank you, uh, to send a thanks to everybody that has donated to Ferris's Walk. It's this weekend. We're just under $11,000, so really wow. appreciate everybody that has donated. Um, everybody that signed up to walk with us, we're looking forward to seeing you there. And also everybody that has helped to raise money. We have a, a, several people that have raised over $100, and then we have two that have raised over 1000 wow. Matt Dolbovalski and his family, um, and also my sister and her boyfriend, Travis. So big thank you. That's and awesome. also, wait, um, wait, wait, before you go on, what's your goal? Our goal was five thousand. Wow, so we doubled terrific. our goal. I think we'll we'll end we'll end over eleven thousand dollars. Do you know what the teams are doing? Do you know yet? We're currently in second place. The the other team, I think they're they're at like twelve thousand. But you know, it's not really a competition. It's it all it's all uh -huh. for the. It's really not <laughs> charity. <laughs> you know, like it's life. charity. It's a competition. <laughs> um, I also wanted to uh, send a thank you out to Scott Garland, aka Scotty Too Hotty. He was on our show. Uh, a few weeks ago, he donated uh, one of his WWF Tag Team Championship jackets that he's worn. Too cool. So he has that for auction up right now Did on eBay. Did he wash it before he donated I was going to ask, has it been laundered? <laughs> well, I'm sure. <laughs> It'd be worth more. For Currently, me. that that's um, there are 10 bids on that for $455 right now. If you want to go check it out, there's also a video of him uh, wearing that jacket. It's tiny.cc forward slash too cool jacket. We created a tiny URL for that. So. What's he doing and who's wearing the jacket? Dancing. Actually, yeah, it is dancing. Yeah. 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 So Not big wrestling. thanks to him. Um, all the proceeds for that is, are going to Down Syndrome Association of Central Florida, 100%, and free shipping. Awesome. So, Excellent. Thank you, everybody. That's great. Congratulations on that number. That's very impressive. Yeah, we're very, very excited with very it. Very impressed. Who else has some housekeeping? I do. Uh, I'd like to talk about Adventures by Disney trips coming up. Uh, we still have room on our February trip, February 17th. Uh, we have a couple of seats that have opened up on our July trip, and we have space available in, uh, for our Italy trip, our artisanal Italy trip that we handcrafted. However, it's two-thirds sold out. It's We have very few seats left, so if you're on the fence about it, the time is now. Jump. So that's it. If you need pricing, if you want more information about any of the trips, you can write to me at Kevin at Dreams Unlimited Travel. Excellent. Anybody were you, else? Were you wearing that hat when I came into the room? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Get my hat. Oh, people think this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? No. Do you want to? Um, I know we want to mention the Delaware meet. Yeah. So the Delaware meet is on November first. 
Um, Excellent. It's in Delaware. Else has any <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any other information. Uh, no, it's actually going to be good. There's uh, a few events for the whole weekend. I think there's like an ice cream social. There's like a beer tour after the meet on Saturday. So I'm beer excited tour. for it. Beer tour. Information on the boards for that for sure. And uh, that's for to raise money for Give Kids the World. So. Yeah. Excellent. I have some. I'm going to go ahead and All right. talk to me. Go ahead, Teresa. Um, the lovely smock that I'm wearing was made for me by one of our listeners, Kathy. Last name begins with P. I'm not going to say her whole last name because I'm going to butcher it. But um, What did she do? Come to your house and like make a dress for you? Yes, she did. She, came. <laughs> she sent her birds. No, I her saw birds. her. We were at the New Jersey meet, and she was wearing a smock, and I admired it. And she said, I'll make you one. And and wow. I picked out the colors and woo, check it she out. Made, you picked out these colors? I did pick out these colors. She made something for Ferris and Finley, and they got a lot of compliments on it, for sure. Very it's nice. uh, red, awesome. It was red, white, and blue, so it was, it was great for the cruise, and yeah. they also wore it for 4th of July. What Does she make clothes for a living? Is she? I know she she has a business, but I don't know if that's her sole business. Was she business. on Project Runway? Because it's really high-quality sewing. It, it's amazing. I love it. I think Tim Gunn would appreciate She's it. not responsible for the fabric. No, I picked out the fabric. What, what's wrong with the fabric? He really wants to place b- blame on the fabric choice. <laughs> Fabric's my choice. Boy, look at this. It's just, it's all I busy. I think we decided and... it was very, the colors were very Mrs. Roper. Yeah. It's the late 60s. It makes me it's happy. It's very bright. It's very colorful It makes me and happy. It is nice. Just like Teresa. Smiley and happy. Excellent. So. All right. Bright and happy. Those were the colors you picked for Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> Not the adjectives on my list. <laughs> I don't know if she says so. All right, I have a couple of things for housekeeping. I want to talk about Dizapalooza 2013. Uh, rapidly approaching. We're getting very excited about that weekend and that party. Um, we are going to close out registration for the event on October 15th. So if you haven't signed up yet, you want to attend, please make wow. sure you sign up. That's next Wednesday. That is next Wednesday, correct. Wow, have people signed up? Actually, isn't it a week from today, next Tuesday? It's next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Wednesday, Tuesday. Yeah, we're going to have, I think Monday, we're going to, okay, go I think we're going to wind up with about 350 people for the event. So good sized crowd. Nice. Not too big where we can't, you know, have some time with everybody, but big enough where it's going to be a big party and a lot of fun. We've got some surprises planned for the, Ooh. for the event. Um, mm-hmm. I've posted the menu and um, some of the things that are going to go on, but there's some stuff I've held back. Cash bar. For surprises, there's going to be a cash bar. Bring cash for those of you who want to get drunk and do <laughs> Toy Story Mania mm-hmm. again. <laughs> I haven't written Toy Story <laughs> Mania since the last one we had there. Wow. Yeah. Well, don't you almost like? It's like why would you do it any other time? Yeah. You have to wait in well, line and. Yeah, I, I think that's what's holding me back. All right, and we also still have room at the Walt Disney World Dolphin for that weekend. They are going fast. So if you're interested in getting a room, we have really good rates, 119 a night, plus tax and resort fees. So make sure you sign up for the event and make sure you get a room if you're interested. Sign-ups for those are on the show notes page and also the uh, the Diz homepage. Excellent. So just in case you're wondering. And keep an eye out. We'll have merchandise coming soon. Yep. <gasps> Excellent. Very exciting. Surprise, surprise. Very, very cool. Um, I want to talk about Podcast Cruise 5.0. Um, we have passed the initial sign-up stage where Disney has agreed to hold pricing for us. So from this point forward, pricing can and has gone up. If you're interested in going on the cruise with us, please, please, please put in a request request right away. You can email tracyh at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. T-R-A-C-E-H-Y. E-Y-H. There we go. Sorry. Oh I had the letters there. Let's <laughs> let's do it right, okay? T-R-A- can you use that in a sentence, please? <laughs> T-R-A-C-E-Y-H. Correct. Tracy. At dreams of like travel. Dot com, and uh, she'll help you get a quote and get you some information on that. Um, it's really f- very far out for us to start making plans for that, but we have put some things in motion already, and this is going to be one of the ones you're going to want to be on. So I'm just saying, just putting it out there, if we can make things happen. It, it seems so far away, but it's going to be here before we know it. And the problem is that everybody wants it, things now. Well, what are you yeah. going to do? And who are the guests going to be? And what are we going to do? And it's too far out to yeah. really make those commitments, but we're working on it. Is it going to be P.L. Travers? Is she going to be on the ship with us? I don't know who that is. Oh, my. Yes. Really? That, she wrote Mary Poppins. I have a feeling she's no longer living. Uh, I have a, <laughs> <laughs> that would be a surprise. I'd rather have Tom Hanks. That'd be awesome. She's going to be the Emma Thompson character in the Saving Mr. Banks. Oh. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's Emma Thompson. Is that who's coming on the ship with us? Maybe. Okay. You never know. So again, if you're interested in going on the cruise with us, contact Tracy and try to lock in your pricing now because pricing will go up for that sailing. And um, that's it. That's all I have for housekeeping. Craig, anything back there? 
I got nothing. All right. <laughs> you know, I've never said this close to John before. Isn't this weird? <laughs> I like throwing it to Craig every once in a while. Really? Yeah, I got doing? nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. All right. We're going to move on to the news. And I have asked Miss Teresa to read the news for us this week. A little too much for me to do all read the news and host the show. So How's she going to read the news and fan herself? I know. With I'm it using at the same it to time. fan myself. How can I read it while I'm... The, it, what... Seriously, you want me to do this? All right. Okay. And so we're throwing the news over to Teresa. All right. In the news today, head of Disney's D23 steps down. Last week, Stephen Clark stepped down as head of D23, the official fan. <laughs> that really does help. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> the official oh Disney fan club and has left the Disney company. According to a spokesperson, the move does not affect the future of D23. Two D23 expos are already in the works, one next month in Japan and a return to Anaheim in 2015, as well as the Treasures of the Archives exhibit that opens in Chicago next month. No replacement has been named for Mr. Clark as of now. Is anybody even <laughs> following this? Do we know if there's anything? <laughs> so you're going to throw the <laughs> story behind you when you're done? Does anybody know any reason for why he stepped out? Have we heard any rumors? Scandal. Could be scandal in any window. Mm. Mm. But there's not been, I mean, he's not moved internally in the company, so he has left the company as yeah. far as I know. I I don't know why. Nah, I, I haven't heard let's anything. Let's stuff up, you want to? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I just, I want Teresa to read every sad or like disappointing news story because it sounds relaxing and peaceful. <laughs> Someone died wow, today. Wow, I hope nobody died in here. I was just going to say, that sounded relaxing and peaceful? To me, it did. It sounded did it? shrill and shrill. Wow. Yeah, okay. I found it kind of obnoxious myself. Um, <laughs> and that was in her head. Yeah, really? And that's how I read it in my head. Well, we don't know where he's gone or what he's doing. Well, was he the only president ever? <laughs> <laughs> Stretch. <laughs> Move along. Let me know when you want me to do the next news story. You're right. talking about this one. <laughs> All right. Well, we wish Mr. Clark luck, good luck in his next. Assignment and we work in his anxious, future ventures, and we actually are uh, waiting to see who they replace him with. So, to be interesting, all right, all right. This next one is like two pages long. Feel free to jump in at any time and stop me when I'm reading here. Okay, don't jump in. Disney offers full time jobs at 427 part. Let me start that over. Disney offers full time jobs to 427 part timers who meet Affordable Care Act threshold. Walt Disney World has offered to elevate 427 part time workers to full time status because those employees have worked enough hours during the past year to qualify as full-timers under the Federal Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. But officials with the Service Trades Council, the coalition of unions that represents more than 30,000 full-time and part-time workers at Disney World, say they are hesitant to accept the offer because it could mean elevating some employees over more senior part-timers who have been waiting for full-time positions. That sucks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right, the 427 part-time workers. Like Walter Cronkite. The 427 part-time workers whom Disney would make full-time rep- represent a tiny sliver of the giant resort's total part-time workforce. Disney has approximately 24,000 part-time employees. Wow, that is a that number. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that number surprised me that it was that high that that many part-timers are out there. Wow. Disney declined to discuss the offer, which was first reported by Bloomberg News. Disney part-timers generally work no more than 25 hours a week, but they can pick up extra shifts. So some have been able to work more than 1,500 hours during the past year. The approximate threshold used to define full-time employment under the Affordable Care Act, the sweeping health care reform legislation championed by President Barack Obama. Do I have to keep reading this? Yes, keep going. Okay. The legislation will require a large employers to offer comprehensive health insurance to all full-time workers or pay penalties beginning next year. Conferring full-time status on the Disney workers could ensure them more hours, generally a minimum of 32 hours a week, as well as giving them access to stronger company-sponsored benefits. So this is good for those 427 people, right? Well, um, yeah, it's good for 427 people, but what they're saying of 24,000 part-timers, we're, they're sure that there's more than just these 427 who would reach the threshold. Yeah. Why are they only picking 427? Because they absolutely positively can identify them as meeting the threshold. Um, you don't have to go on and read the rest, but the next yeah. part was kind of important in that the union is fighting, actually fighting this and saying we don't want Disney to take these 427 and give them the benefit because then that sort of freezes out the option for other folks. Folks who might have been there longer but who haven't reached the threshold because they didn't just didn't have the hours to do it and never thought to ask for more hours because Disney cut them off. So 
it's going to be interesting to see how stuff like this plays out in all of the big mm -hmm. uh, employers out there. Um, I mean, the, the way I understand it is they have to offer these people full-time jobs because they'll be fined if they don't. Because no, these they, have to, members, they have to offer them health care. Okay, sure. At this hours of work. It doesn't have to be a full-time position, but it's defined as this many hours. Okay, so to avoid having to do that, they're offering them a full-time job so that they can be transferred over to a different type of employment so they can avoid having to give them health care. But out of 24,000, they can only identify 427? Well, not every position has the opportunity to get more hours. So that's where it kind of comes in. So if, depending on where you work in the parks or at the resort, you might not have be able to pick up extra shifts to increase your, your weekly. Can you go from, like if you want more hours, can you go to a different location? It depends on what role it yeah, is. So okay. if you're merchandise, you can. Um, because pretty much you're just working in a store no matter where you are. Okay. Attractions are a lot different. Because right. you have to be trained. You have to be specifically trained. Lifeguarding, yeah. you can. You can, you can go to a resort pool uh -huh. if you're at a water park. And then food and beverage, I think, is pretty yeah. similar, too. I think that's kind of the, the easiest one to travel. Character people, they can't swap out and go from one character to another. Oh, I entertainment? Guess. No, I think that's no. pretty hard. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of times with entertainment, they get all the hours anyways because they constantly need all the characters there. Yeah. So, I don't yeah. think there's any, okay, I any struggle there to get hours. I wasn't really worried about them anyway, though. Okay. Well, you should. They make the most money. <laughs> <laughs> that's sad. <laughs> Who's the person that throws the cards? Is it David Letterman? David Letterman. Yeah. <laughs> Just throwing the news. I like Jay Leno when he goes. Mm. Try to throw it at the camera next time. Okay. So can I'll try it. that. <laughs> Come on, Rachel Maddow. Are we ready for the next news story? We are. Moving along. Disney launches Vine account, asks fans to show their Disney side. Disney side. Calling it the most magical Vine on earth, while Disney Parks and Resorts has launched an official Vine account and is celebrating by asking fans to showcase their Disney side on the platform. According to a post on the Disney Parks blog, the Disney Parks Vine account will showcase the fun spirit of Disney's vacations, as opposed to the sad, I guess, I don't know. The Vine Your Disney Side contest encourages Vine users to create six second films that create celebrate their interest in Disney theme parks and characters. According to the contest site, a Disney side is the side of you that comes out the moment, <laughs> good Lord, the moment your family steps through the gates of a Disneyland or Walt Disney World theme park. It's the side of you that laughs more, screams more in a fun way, and just plain lives life to the fullest. Did you write this? I did not. Okay. But that's my everyday life. But that's you know? the, that's the quote of what this promotion is. So that's why it's very Disney. Oh, d very. Word, right. Okay. I, I kind of think I sound like you. A press release adds, everyone has a Disney side. It comes out when they let loose at a Disney park, celebrate their inner pirate or princess, and meet Disney Mouse again and again. Disney Mouse. Disney Mickey Mouse. <laughs> hey, look, I didn't know I was going to be reading that, doing this today. <laughs> Users who create videos include the hashtag, to read. hashtag Disney side contest may appear on Disney Parks Vine account starting October 7th, which was yesterday. yesterday. Right? Yeah, and they started. And each featured filmmaker will receive $1,000. The creator of each featured video will also receive the chance to win a vacation to Disneyland Resort or Walt Disney World and a $10,000 commission to create a series of Disney side videos. Cool. The Disney side site includes example vines as well as do's and don'ts, like do get creative with vine, use looping, time manipulation, etc., and don't use anything that will risk your or anyone else's life. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Even I'm if out. it's hysterically funny. <laughs> yeah, you're out. In a prepared statement, Christine, whatever, Vice President of Global Digital Marketing for Disney Destination said, we're excited to announce our presence on Vine and believe this channel is a great fit considering the fun spirit of our parks and resorts, which serves as amazing locations for visual storytelling. Oh, <laughs> that was so dramatic. I got scared a little bit. And that was Teresa's Disney side. There you go. Um, I love Vine, though. I mean, I think this is cool. I think this is brilliant, yeah. Yeah. actually. I think the whole campaign is really smart in getting user-generated content. So it's kind of like back when they did the the whole commercial series of people, parents telling their kids that they were going. Oh, yeah. And then they use those in the commercials. It's really smart. It's like, you know, actual videos of people. So they don't, you know, it's, it really takes a lot of work out, but it's so effective. Um and I think the way that they really launched this whole Vine account was really smart, too. They went and got, like, really popular people on Vine. So the people that really get lots of views and that are well-known on Vine. And then they had them make Disney videos for them. So I think they, they're That's doing cool. a really good job. I didn't yeah. get that call. Well, you're I so popular. My, my Vine's not popular. You're Vine famous. Yeah. <laughs> you fell under Cat Vine, so apparently that didn't... <laughs> there is actually a cat channel. Have you oh, seen... Oh, yeah. Has anybody seen the commercials for the Show Your Disney side yet? No. I've seen a couple of them. They're very cute. Yeah. And Disney's done a really great job with this promotion, as they, I think they do with every promotion. Anything they put out there that's uh, 
creative I think is excellent and I think this is great this is you know let's really capture the social media aspect of it um, it wasn't in this story but there was some crazy crazy numbers about uh, how many uh, how many mentions they got on Twitter from it mm-hmm. I mean millions so someone's really hit the nail on the head with this have any of you done it? Has anyone done a Vine yet? No, I need to go check. Well, I've done I've done a few, but not for this. It's I actually go check a out. really good contest. I mean, they're choosing one a day, I think, for the next 15 days or so, maybe longer. And every person that gets chosen for that day gets $1,000. Are they doing it like, do you have to be in the park or you can do it anywhere? No, nope. you can do it anywhere. Just Some of the ones design. that have already won, he was in PetSmart. And he was like talking to a parakeet in PetSmart, trying oh to teach gosh. him how to sing uh, Tiki Room. And so he won the first day, I think it was yesterday. That's creative. Yeah. Because all I do, have you seen the commercial with the father in the, uh, like the Home Depot? No. Where he picks up a um, fluorescent light, and then he picks up a welder's mask, and then they play the music for Star Wars. They play Darth Vader's music Aww. behind him, and he starts to go crazy in the store. So that's the whole idea is that it's, people are showing their Disney side outside of Disney. I see this involving little mouse ears and Klaus. Mm-hmm. Oh, thousand bucks and then if you win like the entire thing like i think you read they'll give you ten thousand dollars um to go on a disney vacation to create your own like vine series that's pretty cool yeah it's really smart it's cool yeah there's a lot of creative people out there for sure excellent it's awesome oh that that'll do it for the news (laughs) (laughs) i'm so proud (laughs) i feel like i've given birth (laughs) oh lord all right so we're gonna move on to rapid fire (laughs) And I'm not going to pick on anybody. I'm going to let people volunteer. Who'd like to go first for rapid fire? I'll go. Mine's the longest. That is to screw up Craig. Yeah, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to see Craig sweat back there. That's Corey's. All right. Go ahead, Corey. Right. Oh, yeah. You have to pick the slide and the... Okay. Um, the haunted carriage rides are no longer being offered. That's it. Where? <laughs> oh, my uh, God. Ever. <laughs> for, for wilderness. Uh, they, they used to do haunted carriage rides during Halloween, but they're no longer doing them. They were fun, too. I've never done it. Did you oh, did one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Well, that sucks. Sure? Do you think Leah Michelle caused this because of horse cruelty? <laughs> all right. That was an obscure <laughs> reference. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a real thing. She's against all the New York City uh, horse carriage rides. So, Should yeah. throw paint on them. And stuff? I think if any horses are treated yeah. right, it's Disney horses. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. So no more carriage rides. I don't know. How much was this? Was it expensive? We took all the information off our site. Oh, unfortunately. But you, you've done it before. Yeah, I'm sure it was, I don't remember. It couldn't have been too much. I wouldn't do. You think, do they do ones at Christmas time too? Yeah. So oh, I, I hope that they don't really get rid fun. of those ones. Yeah, because they pipe in. You've got like themed music in the carriage when you're riding along. It's cool. Very cool. Oh, and also Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is sold out on the 31st. I don't think anybody had that as a rapid fire, did you? No. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm going to just go through our updates and start reading stuff off right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's okay. it. All right. Thank you, Corey. Let's go to Sean. No, let's go to Kevin. No, let's oh go to Sean. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> stressing me out. Let's go to Sean. Okay. Okay, for real? All right. <laughs> For reals. Um, so Celebrated Dream Come True Parade is ending on January 4th of next year. Um, it's actually kind of ending in the end of December, um, on December 20th. But then they bring in the Christmas parade every day at Magic Kingdom. So um, it'll kind of have a hiatus. And then it'll come back for four days, the first through the fourth. And then the new parade will debut in 2014 in spring. So Any idea what that theme is going to be? Yeah. Um, it's called Fantasy in the Sky, I think. Parade? Mm-hmm. No. Mm. Festival of Fantasy. <laughs> what? Think. Festival of something, I don't know. Now you're just Celebrate words. the dreams I, of Fantasy well, Festival. Wait, Fantasy come true. Fantasy in the sky Fantasy was the, the old, <laughs> is the old fireworks before wishes, I know. Right. It's Festival of something. Or the Masters Fantasy of the I think sky. it's Festival of Fantasy. I don't know. We're going to go with one Fantasy's of those. Fantasy's in it, I think. But it doesn't debut until the spring? Yeah, so there's going to be some uh, lag parade with no parade. No parade? Yeah. Is it? Can they do that? Well, <laughs> I, I think by Disney Disney law I they can. I think there's a constitutional amendment that's like that. <laughs> it's part of the sequester. <laughs> <laughs> Government it's part, it's part of limited parade. time, no magic. The parade's been furloughed. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm kind of sad about seeing this one go because this debuted the first day that I was on my college program. So I worked at the Emporium, so I would hear it every single day that I worked on Main Street. So wow. it's kind of sad. It's and that bad. really shiny float's going away forever, right? Oh, well, probably not. They reuse that in every single parade. Send it to another park. 
that works. The mirrored one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, so far, a lot of sad rapid fires, things closing. Let's go to Teresa. Maybe she has a happy rapid fire. Something (laughs) opening. Oh, hang on. Oh, Oh, she has a whole list of closing. I do. I'm doing the rehabs and closings. It's so sad. And I'll do it in a sad voice. Walt Disney World Railroad is closed from 9-30-13 to 10-20-13. So it's getting ready to open back up soon. Peter Pan's flight is closed until November 13th. It's a small world. Oh, really? It's closed <laughs> from December 2nd to December 12th. We get refurbs and reactions. <laughs> That's the first time I've read the list. Splash Mountain, <laughs> Splash Mountain is closed January 6th to March 21st of next year. Casey's Corner, God, that closes a lot, is closed January 6th until February 15th. So don't... You can't go there for Valentine's Day. They have to strain the hot dog water. They do. (laughs) (laughs) Agribob Bazaar is closed January 6th to February 2nd of 2014. That's a shame. Oh, that'll be missed. (laughs) Agribob Bazaar. Tomorrowland Speedway is closed January. I would say don't go any. Don't go to the Magic Kingdom in January. January 6th to January 12th. And of course, the parade. Sean just told us about that. Um. Let's see. Let's scroll down here to Animal Kingdom. There's nothing happening there. Hollywood Studios. (laughs) Everything in Animal Kingdom shut down. (laughs) It's closed. Hollywood Studios. Winnie the Pooh Magic of Disney Animation is closed. Don't go there. Gosh, is that it? Power Rangers have left. When did that happen? I thought you said Power Rangers of Love. (laughs) (laughs) It's a song by Show Day. (laughs) Um, Let's go down downtown Disney. I think I'm done. The rest of the stuff's just. Okay, good. Close the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and all of these can change at any time. And the monorail thingy that w- just, just gonna say, did you mention the monorail? Yeah, the thingy. monorail thingy. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Where's it say that? It's down here. Starting October sixth, the there resort monorail to Magic Kingdom will stop running during 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. because of construction of the Grand Floridian. So during the day, all day. Yeah. Right. I would so, be but the other monorail, if I was staying at one of those resorts. I would too. You They're going to get that. a little flyer in their room. Oh, that's them. nice. Oh, nice yeah. flyer. <laughs> wow. So is it going to be a color flyer? <laughs> Use the, the printer. <laughs> Ooh, spot colors. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know. <laughs> is that font Times Roman? <laughs> Look at that. It's exciting. But they have to do this, Vatican. people, right? They have to do it. They can't. They have to do upgrades and they have mm-hmm. to do rehabs yeah. and refurbs. It just. Why wouldn't it be from like 1 a.m. till 7 p.m.? A.M. Mm. On the monorail you're talking about. Why wouldn't you close it? I don't know. Why would you close it? Wait, it's already started, but when does it end? It doesn't say here. Until they're done. 2017. I don't think it was for more than two or three weeks, I think, so. Okay. Yeah, but I agree with Kevin. Why not work on it at night? Like the highway system. Do you think the noise would be too loud for a Grand Floridian? I guess that's probably their their Mm -hmm. reasoning, but I don't know. You and your darn logic. All right. Back to you, John. All right. Thank you, Teresa. And the next rapid fire will be Kevin, Mr. Close. I'm going to do mine like Teresa. (laughs) Disney Cruise Line has announced that Palo is going to increase the cost of their dining there. It's going from $20 to $25 a person. It's not working for you. Stop it. The new pricing will be effect on the Disney. (laughs) Okay. Nothing's on camera right now. It's just a slide. You do realize that this is my chance to host, right? (laughs) My kids are listening. Now they're ruined forever. Just to explain, (laughs) Sprite spilled everywhere. Are you you doing this on purpose? (laughs) I I, I need to see the director. I'm wet. Can't work this is why we go live. So All right, let's uh, let's move on to Craig's rapid fire, and then we'll come back to Kevin because Craig doesn't Craig's have people. Switch. I got nothing. I got to be honest. I'm so excited that I get, I get to use the beep noise again in the audio show. <laughs> Unbelievable! It's just been in there. You had it in your trash that you haven't had beep. All right, I didn't. Mm. She said, "Oh, shit. Craig, why don't you do your rapid fire while we so get sorry. our Joan Rivers okay. up?" <laughs> um. So. Last night, well, I guess it would have been in the daytime in Hong Kong, but last night for us, um, (laughs) the first Marvel attraction was announced for Hong Kong Disneyland in 2016. It'll be the Iron Man experience. Um, Tom Staggs was out there to do a whole big announcement about it um, because it is a really big deal. They bought Marvel in 2009, and we haven't seen anything from it yet except for a bunch of meet and greets. Um, 
that haven't even come out yet because they're going to be on the Disney Magic, uh, the Captain America one. Um, so basically, from what they announced in the poster that came out for it, it's going to be another simulator ride. It looks very similar to Star Tours. Um, even it looks similar to the original Star Tours poster in a way. So that's kind of all the details that they they talked about. I mean, they said it would be a flight simulator, and it looks like one, but don't know what's going to happen in it. That's a little disappointing, isn't it? What, a flight but, simulator? Yeah. It depends on how they... You know, if it's not like Star Tours, hopefully there's like some individual uh, it, contraption that you wear, so you're flying like no. he does. No? Uh, what I'm seeing, I, well, what I'm guessing, not seeing, is that it's just going to be exactly like Star Tours. They had a chance to go and go after Universal and try to steal their ride system with Spider-Man, I Transformers. Same thing. It could have been amazing, but mm. instead it's just going to be stationary. You're going to be claustrophobic in a box. It, I mean, it could be awesome. I would love to go out there to ride it because I love Iron Man, but it's it's not sounding promising. It already. could be another iteration of Dumbo, also. Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> Iron Man Dumbo. <laughs> Michelle in chat wants to know why the building looks like a Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> go back to that picture. <laughs> it does. Uh, oh, it actually, looks like a waffle. I really like Iron Man too. Mm, and okay. one. Well, it's, you know, hopefully, but you know, who knows what they'll do out here. That's always an option, too, for them. As long as they don't clone it. So. All right. Yeah. So now that we thank you, Craig, very much for oh, you're welcome. saving the day. Yeah. Now that we've cleaned up, Kevin, do you want to go and finish your rapid fire, please? <laughs> Put your hands in your lap. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to sit here. Stop. Disney Cruise Line is increasing the cost of Palo. Brunch and dinner. The cost will increase from twenty to twenty-five dollars. The new pricing will be effect on the magic on October twentieth. Guests who have pre-booked Palo will be allowed to dine at the previously booked rate. My favorite line was, "Palo has always been a world-class dining experience." Mm. Uh, okay, it's good. It's very good. I'm not, not sure I would call it world-class, but that's it. It's going to cost you more to go to Palo. Do you think this is going to affect people booking Palo? Do you think hopefully it's going to ruin their vacation? <laughs> I don't think. Hopefully, it so, so, so it's easier to, to get in, right? Yeah. Well, I guess everything has to go up when they have to increase pricing, but. Sad to say, you know, I'm surprised you didn't do uh, changing to the dining plan uh, to Disney reservations, where now every reservation is going to have to have. Credit you card. sent me this and said, "Do this is your rapid oh, fire." Shh, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, they're doing a bit. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> a bit. During the break, we are all going to have discussion about how to okay, behave when I'm the host now, individually. Disney has now in, uh, enforced a rule that. Every table service restaurant will have a credit card hold attached. You will no longer be able to make a dining reservation for a table service restaurant without leaving a credit card. Oh, unbelievable. Uh, you know. It's, it's, that's for no call, no shows, right? That's exactly what yeah. it's for, but, I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. I, I think, in my opinion, between this and, I mean, leaving a credit card hold, I think they, they give you a 24-hour notice. You have to cancel it by 11.59 the night before. Mm. You know, there are circumstances that preclude you from making your dining reservation. Between picking the, what time you want to ride the Haunted Mansion six months out and making your dining reservation with a credit card, it's kind of... Uh, it, it, they're going to unfun Disney eventually. But don't you think that this might make it easier for people to get reservations on the fly? If there aren't so many people that are booking for no reason. I would think that, except we have people who, we have planners who want to book their reservation six months in advance. And I think what's going to happen is I don't think that's going to change. I just think the problem is going to be once cancellations happen. I live locally, and I am, other than some really hardcore reservations, like La Cellier or Ohana, you can get a reservation. You, oh, and be our guest. There are no reservations between now and the end of December on any night. I couldn't find anything. Yeah. But for the most part, I think you can find a place to eat pretty readily, unless it's one of those really hardcore things. I just think this is going to cause people aggravation. Kid gets sick. You're riding Disney transportation, and it's it's behind schedule. I mean, they tell you when you make a Disney dining reservation, if you're on property, leave two hours. Depart two hours before your reservation is ready. And... And I think they'll charge you per person on your reservation. It is per so, person. Uh, you yeah. know, right. a reservation for four, each 
person. It's It'll $40. be forty dollars. Yeah. Now I would think it would be wonderful if Disney then said, if you're not seated within fifteen minutes of your allotted time, we'll start paying you ten minutes yeah. for every <laughs> half hour you have, or ten dollars for every fifteen minutes you have to wait. I would then think it was a fair fight. This I just think is going to cause hassle. I just hope that this will open up the opportunity to call morning of. So if people are canceling the night before because they're not going to make it to their reservation, maybe we'll have an opportunity to get reservations for the same day. To that point, though, I don't think it's one of the places where it's in effect is Be Our Guest. And Be Our Guest is still evil to get into. Now, that's because it's new and it's exciting and people want to eat there. But I don't know that the the current system of credit cards at the current current restaurants has made it any better. I was just going to say, yeah, because I can't imagine there's going to be enough people canceling or not showing up to make this open up for enough people that anybody's going to see a difference. There might be one or two families who do it, but I don't see it really affecting whether you can get a reservation mm-hmm. or not. But I, I could also, be wrong. I also wonder, too, how many people will opt not to make so many reservations. I think that. I think you're right. Well, I think with the cost of food and just reading um, just the feedback that you hear on the boards and from people, people think Disney food, the, the quality has gone down. So I think the fact that you have to work so hard to get a reservation, the cost is so high, and you feel the quality isn't it, I think that's going to stop people from getting reservations also. I think it's become, going to become a hassle. I wonder how this plays in with uh, the dining plan. If you have a dining, dining plan, you're still going to have to call and leave a uh, credit card to hold that reservation, and then when you get there, you put your food on the dining plan. So right. that's going to be interesting to see how mm. people decide to handle that in the future. All right, so that'll do it for Rapid Fire. Anybody else have anything they want to add, want to talk about before we close out the show? Teresa, do you have any curse words you'd like to use before we... No, I'm good. I'd just like to apologize apologize for my profanity. (laughs) It won't happen again. We appreciate that, Teresa. All right, well, that'll do it. What was I going to do? I just wanted to ask Kevin if he wanted to mention the the second article. No, that's okay. Okay, then never mind. (laughs) You have a bit going? <laughs> yes, we do. We play yeah, it. it. <laughs> it's a sketch. It was great. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it went off really well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so that'll do it for this segment. Um, for those of you watching, I hope you stay with us because we uh, we're going to cover Epcot's Food and Wine Festival next, and Kevin and I are going to be doing um, a review of our Adventures by Disney Germany trip, so I hope you stay for that. Um, Thank you guys for participating. I appreciate all of your interactions. Yes, all of you. Thank you. Um, And uh, thank you to everybody who's watching us live and who's listened to the show. So that'll do it for this week. We hope you join us next time for another edition of the Diz Unplugged. (laughs) 